Hi friends, welcome to our prayer service for healing and unity. Uh, we are so glad that you could join us. We're, we're simply wanting to take a moment and, and join together as Christians because together in prayer, we can make a change, we really can. And we recognize there's so much hurt in our world right now. The, the pandemic has caused so much hurt and, and the ramifications through the um, economic situation and people wondering whether they're going to have a job and the anxiety that causes and the separation of loved ones this is causing. And then of course, our whole nation being in turmoil over the, the racial injustice that we have seen yet again. We, we as a people need to come together in prayer. And so we're so glad you could join us. We're so glad that you are a part of us. So there's gonna be different sections to this. I'm going to, to lead in prayer, then Pastor Megan is going to lead in part, and then Pastor Gary's going to, to finish it up. But uh, um, for, for my part, I'm, I'm simply going to invite you to join me in very short prayers, and then we're gonna have uh, an intentional silence so that you can pray as the Holy Spirit leads you in, in a personal way. So again, we're glad you're with us and, and thanks for joining us. Holy God, may your peace that passes all understanding fill our hearts today as we lift our songs to you. Peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea
Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and may have it in all its fullness. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you have blessed us with the gift of life and you have placed us in a world filled with beauty and wonder and joy and awe. Your perfect will for us is wholeness in body, mind, and spirit. And so we bow before you in wonder and awe at your feet and freely acknowledge our complete dependence upon you for all that is good. So Lord, for all these things, we give you our praise and thanks. In your presence, we remember our sin, our failure, for we know that we have sinned by the things we have done and by the things we have failed to do. We have sinned by the words we have spoken and the words that we have failed to speak. We recognize that, that we have brought damage to the lives of others we have brought damage to the good world that you have created. And so, Lord, hear us now as we lift up to you our prayer of confession. Holy God, our hearts are heavy, hearts are broken, and so we pray that you would give us the eyes to see and the ears to hear where your Holy Spirit is working in our world. And we pray that your Spirit would move in and through us to give us the ability to see every single human being the way you see them. Break our hearts for what breaks yours, O oh Lord, and let us not merely say that we love each other, but let us demonstrate that love for one another. Help us, Lord, with that good gift of compassion that we may mourn with those who mourn and weep with those who weep. And we pray that through us, through us, your justice will roll like waters and let your righteousness and love flow from us like rivers of living water. Purify our hearts, O Lord, and fill us with a genuine hunger for justice and for mercy and for true peace for all people. And let this mercy, let this compassion let this love start with us so that the world can see the true power that is love. And Lord, we ask that you would hear us as now together, all of us join in the prayer that your son taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hello, please join me in a responsive prayer. You can respond in your heart or out loud to just hear God's spirit there with you. Let us pray. Jesus, we cry out to you from a place of brokenness and trauma. Jesus, you have experienced trauma 
and you know the healing on the other side. Let your healing begin in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the sick and infected, God, heal and help. Sustain bodies and spirits. Contain the spread of infection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our vulnerable populations, God, protect our elderly and those suffering from chronic disease. Provide for the poor, especially the uninsured. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our local, state, and federal governments, God help our elected officials as they allocate the necessary resources for co combating this pandemic. Help them to provide more tests. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our scientific community, leading the charge to understand the disease and communicate its gravity. God, give them knowledge, wisdom, and a persuasive voice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those with mental health challenges who feel isolated, anxious, and helpless, God, provide them every necessary support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For workers in a variety of industries facing layoffs and financial hardship, God, keep them from panic and inspire your church to generously support them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For families with young children at home, for the unforeseeable future, God, help mothers and fathers to partner together creatively for the care and flourishing of their children. For single mothers and fathers, grow their networks of support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For parents who cannot stay home from work, but must find care for their children, God, present them with creative solutions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For people who want to be working, but sit home unemployed, God, make connections for them to find jobs and sufficient income. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. God, you are so good to us. We thank you, Lord, for covering us in your love. We thank you for surrounding us with your protection and your spirit. We thank you for reaching out your hand to us, God, and pulling us to you. You are reaching through the storm, walking on the water, even when I could not see. When I thought you were a thousand miles away, not for a moment did you forsake me, not for a moment did you forsake me, and after Forsake me. 
step, every breath you are there. And every tear, every cry, every prayer. In my hurt, at my worst, when my world falls down, not for a moment, will you forsake? After all, Lord, you are constant, and after all, you are only good. After all, you are sovereign, not for a moment will you forsake. Paul writes in the book of Romans, We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. There was a man by the name of Tom, a very successful businessman who, had a, who was married and had two children, and he contacted the coronavirus. After a few days, he went to the hospital. He was put in ICU and hooked up to a ventilator. After his treatment was over and his quarantine was done, he was able to come home. And the first thing he did when he walked into the house was to give his two daughters a big hug. And then he guessed his wife and said to her, we need to go and talk. So they went into the dining room and he began to talk to her. He said, I haven't been good to you. I haven't been the husband I should have been. I have drifted away. My business I've, has taken over and I don't want that to happen anymore. I want us to have the love that we had when we first were married, and I want us to be together again. And I want my children. I thought of them, and I, I love them, and I want to be with them. I want to be there when they hit a home run or when they dance at a recital. And I also want to be there whenever they are having problems, when they have disappointments, so I can talk with them and, and console them. And I want to be there when they have joys to experience that with them. But most of all, I want to be there to guide them and to teach them and to train them in the ways in which they should grow up. And I want God to be part of our lives. As I lay there in that bed, I prayed to God because I was afraid I was going to die. And God answered my prayers. I felt a peace and a love and a presence of the Spirit. And I want God to be there. So I want to go to church and have God be part of our family, the center part of our family, and the center part of our marriage and of my life. That is a thought that we have a lot of problems in our world, and certainly COVID-19 is one of them. And I thank those who fight this dreaded disease, for those who are on the first lines, for the, the medical staff, for the doctors and the nurses, for the tech people, for those who clean the rooms and cook the food, and for those people in the nursing homes and care facilities. Many of the people are isolated. They do not get to see their family or even their friends. And those people who come to work every day to lift them up and to, to give compassion and to care for them. And then for those who, who respond to calls, the police officers and the EMTs and the firefighters and others who, when they receive a call, they do not know what is on the other end. And so then they respond. And they respond to take care and to serve their community and to help other people. Let us pray for them at this time. Our gracious Lord and our God, we thank you for all those people who have the courage and the faith to go forward, to, to reach out and to care and to be your instruments of healing 
and of service. And Lord, we pray that for them and that as they go, that you will be there to protect them. And we pray for their families as well who are left and who wait for them to come home. But be with them, Lord. They are very special and they truly are your instruments of healing in our community. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. That's not the only problem facing our, our world and our country. In our country, discrimination has come again to the forefront. When I was a teenager back in the 60s and 70s, we thought that much of had been changed and that the world would be all right. And much has been changed. There's been tremendous progress since that time. But now we find out that truly there still is discrimination. There are people who... who are not able to get the jobs that they're qualified for, those who live in fear in their ordinary lives. There was a man whose daughter talked to him and said, Daddy, I don't want you to leave home. I want you to stay with me. And he said, what are you talking about? You've never said this before. And she said, but Daddy, I don't want you to leave and be murdered like your good friend. This man was Stephen Jackson, a former NBA player. He was a good friend of George Floyd, and his daughter is six years old. I cannot imagine my daughter or my son being afraid that if I left the home that I would be murdered and not be able to return. I can't imagine worrying about my parents walking out in the, in the, around the block or for people who are not able to get jobs they're qualified for. We need to change in our country. We need to make changes in the way in which we do laws, in which we elect officials. We need to stand up for what is right and stand up and talk about how people in our country need equality. God created all of us equal, but we do not have equality within our own lives and in our own homes. Jesus said to his disciples, I have said this to you so that you and you you may have peace. In the world you may perse persecution. But take courage. I have conquered the world. That is my hope. That is my, my faith. That is my inspiration. That God will allow us to overcome both the virus, that he will give us a vac vaccine through the scientist work, and that we as people can change the world. And that change comes with me. I must change my own attitudes and my own understanding, and I must live the way Christ has given to me, that I might live that all people shall have the equality and the rights that I enjoy. God, we thank you today that you are constant. When things seem to be ever-changing, that you are the steady rock that quiets our soul, God. We thank you for being our defender, our comforter. Lord, for being the great God that we know that we can depend on. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. As we wait upon the Lord, wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord our God. You reign forever, our hope, our strong.
days we wait upon the Lord, wait upon the Lord, we wait upon the Lord. Strength from rises, we wait upon the Lord, wait upon the Lord, we wait.